So guys, how are you? Mm, let me finish this ice cream, my favorite. And we're going to talk about precision and cat landing today. If you don't like my technique, we can talk about the high level athletes. I find a few videos from the different athletes. Uh, you should know probably the artist project, storer, and uh, some individual athletes. We're going to talk where do we need precision, how to teach kids precision, what do you need to focus when you doing precision as a coach or as an athlete, what kind of mistake athletes do. Let's start with precision or accuracy, what they call in Europe. In Russia it's really popular, it's called it Akuraska. I want to say first that precision, it's not a jump, it's a landing. Let me explain why. Because the jump could be from two feet, from one foot, it could be conk precision. So when you done conk, you're not jumping from anything else, right? You're in the air. And when you're talking about precision, you want to see how people are landing on precision, correct? And we're coaching the precision as a landing and we're focusing to stick this landing. Land on the ball of your foot and raise your heels up. Here we suggest to do precision landing uh, from the hip height. Everything what is going to do higher from the hip to shoulders, that's better to do for cat landing for a few reasons. Most of them from five to 12 years old. Never done big jumps. The muscles is not ready for a big landing and absorbing the pressure on the ankles. And ankles are usually really flexible for the kids and young athletes. Keep the heels off the block or off the ground. Bend their knee, keep the posture nice and straight because we don't want to lean forward and start falling forward. If they're falling forward, they need to push the hips forward and that's how they can find the balance between falling forward and falling back. Why it's so important to stick the landing? Because parkour is meant to be done outside. If you're jumping from one wall to other wall, you step off the wall, you fall off the wall. That's why I explaining my students. I want to be sure my students know if they will go outside, they will try that and I know they're safe because I'm trying to build their mentality here in the gym, gymnastic centers, and they don't have any equipment for parkour. So they usually use some soft block. And I'm kind of okay with that if you're teaching kids from five years old till 10 years old. It will be safe for them. They improve faster. Maybe they will never try outside. Our goal, I believe, is to teach kids to do it safe. Doesn't matter what kind of equipment is that. If they decided to do outside, you as a coach know. You teach them well and they will go outside and will land perfectly safe. Find the latch, drop the heels and do heel raises. Let them drop the heels a little bit lower and lift them themselves all the way up. Start from two feet, go to one foot, you want to be sure the ankles warm up. Always start from the ground, proceeding on the line. So it depends on the group. You can give them just a jump on the block first. But what I like to do, I don't know, maybe some gyms will not allow you to do this. I grab the chalk and I draw the small box so they can land inside of the box. Now we can do more interesting. We can go higher or we can take two walls. Now we can do jump precision. And let's watch one of the first video. I want to start with the high jump and precision. The Luke Sable, he has a really high vertical jump and he has incredible takeoff technique. And as you can see here, when he jump, he land on the uh, closer to the ball and after he slide, you roll on it. That's a really important part. In the next video, I want to show you Brody uh, Posen. Uh, incredible athletes, see him in uh, 2019 in North American parkour competition. You can watch his incredible plyo precision and again plyo it's a continuous jump and he stick his landing in the last beam and this is a perfect picture when you can see his body position and how he can see his toes and the wall and his toes is like a aim for the wall which is a target. If his feet will be behind him, he will not be able to bring the feet in the right spot. Precision we usually call pre. And there is a lot of different variation like two feet pre, pile pre, stride pre, tic tac pre, con pre, and more and more and more different pre, front flip foot pre, which Dom Domato is doing a lot. 
In this video, I don't want to talk too much about how to start your jump and your body position in the era when you take off. About this, I want to talk in uh, future videos when we will talk about how to jump and what kind of takeoffs we have in parkour. You as a coach or maybe as an athlete who just started, you need to know that technique could be different, depends on the angle of your landing. It could be jump from the height and power of your jump is going straight down and it's easy to stick your landing. You want to be sure when you're landing, you don't want to land straight forward and land on the top because sometimes surface could be really slippery and your feet just will slide and the student will fall off. Always teach your students go up and down as possible but if it's no way to do, they want to do a huge jump, you need to know about this technique. The land almost on the arch of your foot and after observe from the foot they start using the knee muscle and they start rolling up so the impact will not go straight forward to your knee or your hips because we're not stopping in this position we slowing down and rolling up on the block so as you can see he overshoot it and the all fours push him forward and that's why his feet sliding so when you start doing parkour and you're worried about landing the corner, you want to land right on the top. Teach your students to be more accurate and land on the beginning of the obstacles. And on this one, like we can talk a little bit about his takeoff, his toes. Again, not jumping from the top of the obstacle. It's rolling on the corner to get the best push off the wall. You can see his feet coming in front. A little bit too much pressure probably on the back, but it's a huge jump. So when you're doing tic-tac, never place your heel on the wall because you don't want to spring your ankle. Heels up, as you can see, he's trying to even engage more ankle. You don't want your ankle go lower than uh, horizontal position of your toe part because there is Achilles which you can rip or your student can injure. Get this video, Kong free after the Kong position, after the push, he's bringing his feet in front of him and start aiming the wall. So feet, wall and eyes in the same position. That's what you want to see from your students. Our legs straight, but it looks like a straight because he has white pants. Never keep your legs straight, you don't want to hyperextend your knee. One of the most popular precision is a stride precision. When you do precision from two feet jump, your feet stay behind you and can aim the target as soon as you jump. But when you do stride, you have this opportunity to control your jump and see your landing and your aim foot right from the beginning of the jump. Let's talk about next landing, which is cat landing or observed landing or frog landing. I would call it cat landing. It's easy to explain. And the cat landing, it's actually the transition from vertical speed to the horizontal speed. Also, I want to mention that Kyle Wilson has a really good um, explanation about cat landing. The best way what I see a cat landing movement is when you're jumping from height and you want to continue your run. It's more like a comma in the sentence where you kind of slow down but it still gives you power to continue your run and don't stop as a precision, right? 13 years, 14 years ago, the cat landing was more like a frog landing. After when I finished my master's degree, I totally understand that we were doing wrong and I find why our student had a knee issue. It's because guys, when you're jumping down, you don't want a knees bending more than 45 degrees, pull all tendons, all muscles, so you're not absorbed, actually, you can't, you can't hold your weight here. Here, yes, your muscles engage, and your student will be okay. And other things what can happen when you do cat landing and keep your hips a little bit too high, especially if young kids who is young and the upper body is not that strong, and they're pushing too far forward, and arms collapsing, and they have face plants, so, um, yeah. Try to be careful with this one. Keep your arms nice and tight, rigid, and get a nice push to lift your chest up and keep running. When your student is dropping down, teach them to land on your feet and after transfer your weight to the hands. I'm always welcome, guys, if you're playing a different variation cat. 
like a monkey run or a side cat. So you hear. <laughs> the more your students know different variations, the better for them. The body knows more movements, so it will benefit them as an athlete. Okay, guys, good luck, and see you next week. It was Sensei Yvonne.